Hey there, welcome to On Set. I am Daniel Norton, here in a second with Marissa. Sorry, we're, well, we're only one minute behind, surprisingly, because 10 minutes ago, the entire internet and the entire streaming system went down. So I do not have Seth here today, so I'll be on my own. So please do let me know in the chat how the sound is and stuff. I will check it periodically uh, over here. Oh, it says now would be a good time to play an ad. No thanks. But if you want me to play an ad, let me know. Let me remove this. Boom. Okay. So today, check over here. Audio, audio. I know there's a little bit of a delay, so I'll check over there. Uh, hey, so today we're going to talk a little bit about kind of, so I'll give you a little background here. When I was a photo assistant years and years ago, or just a couple years ago, I'm a young man, um, one of the guys I worked for was very into being inspired by the way they light by using, by watching films as opposed to looking at photography. And I'm also the same way. Like I like to look to see what people are doing in other mediums, whether it be painting or filmmaking or and music videos were big at one point. Do they still have music videos, Marissa? Yeah. Yeah, they still have music videos, so there you go. <laughs> um, anyways, this was, uh, this was just some, a place. So there's a few things that I use in my work and that you could use that kind of come at least as far as I'm concerned, from that kind of a point of view. And we're going to talk a little bit about that, and we'll take some pictures, and we'll, we'll go along with that. So let me know where everybody's from, like you all do. I sound better than ever. Ha-ha. I turned myself up a little bit. Uh, can you rewatch it later? Of course. <laughs> You'll have Seth's coffee. Exactly. Seth's in Las Vegas. So if anybody's in Las Vegas right now, after this is over, you can go see Seth. He's down at WPPI. Let me actually set my computer up. Sorry, like I said, I had an internet goof. So I'm gonna start off by using flash because that's what we always like to use here, but I will use some actual kind of movie type of lighting. I went through a phase, a few years, a phase. Do you still go through phases when you're an adult? I went through a phase a few years back where I, I kind of got rid of all my flash equipment and replaced it with constant lights, data lights to be precise, and shot for a long time that way. I, I'll close this window. I, uh, I came back to flash because ultimately as a stills photographer, you, there's so many advantages to using a flash. But some of the things I think are, that you do for filmmaking are a little bit unique. And while they do make certain things, and somebody's going to tell me in the chat, they make that for flash, I don't feel like you get the same vibe with it. So there are still a few kind of filmmaker tools that I use, even though I use a lot of flash again. On that note, I will talk about the gear I'm going to use as I go. If I use something and I don't say what it is, please do ask and I will let you know. This is, I'm just tethering my computer here to capture one. Somehow I set this up really weird today. Let's see if I can do this. You're seeing all the behind the scenes stuff. This is Daniel getting his computer ready. All right, I'm going to go like that. So I'm tethered into a MacBook Pro, as always, and using Capture One software, which we'll look at in a second. This is just a tethering cable. So basically, whenever I'm doing any kind of work, commercial or otherwise, I always shoot tethered, always shoot tethered. <laughs> Somebody, somebody's like, what about? No, no, I always shoot tethered. I mean, there is probably the rare occasion where I don't, so you can never really say always, right? But um, I always shoot tethered. It helps. It's a little bit of a challenge sometimes if you're on location, but there's really, if you're in a studio working with a subject, then there's really no reason not to be tethered. And what's nice about being tethered is that you can immediately see what you're getting, and so can the client, and you can even make adjustments as you go. So if you're gonna do things like color grading, you can actually color grade right there and then on the spot. Am I frozen? I'm frozen. Oh, I was frozen for a second, but I'm moving now. I think I was frozen anyways. A lot of weird things going on today. <laughs> Thanks for bearing with me. All right, so, Without a subject, it's gonna be a little tricky, but there she is. This is Marissa. Hi. Probably, not, oh, you know what? Yeah, it's weird, right? Doesn't it look very yellow over there? How does the color look in the space? Does it look yellow? It looks weird, right? Does it look yellow? There it doesn't, but over there it does. Oh. It could be the monitor. So let me know if the space looks yellow. I'm not gonna do anything about it right now, but I'm just curious. All right, so video sources, let me get everything set up here. Okay, so that was me. They call that stretching, right? In, in the, like when you're like on stage. Right, they go stretch, so because yeah, so, Marissa wasn't ready. All right, <laughs> so what we're going to do first, let's start off with some basics as always, and then we'll start uh, incorporating some ideas. So number one, what is your favorite film? 
and we'll try to do lighting from it. Should we risk that? I already said it. I said it out loud. It's like, it's like the, t oh, I know every film. <laughs> it's like the time Seth was doing a light with uh, any light demo. And, and I said, yeah, people in the audience, just bring whatever light you want. And Seth will use it. He was not happy, but he did get some really good pictures. So we'll see what we can get here. Anyways, um, name a favorite film. But what we're going to do is we're going to start off with some basic stuff. We're going to use flash, as, I'm, as mentioned. One of the reasons why we like to use flash as photographers is it allows us to control our space. So the first thing we're going to do is set ourselves up in a situation where only the flash is affecting our shot, right? And the way that we do that is we get our camera here and we say, <clears throat> we say, okay, we're going to set our camera at the lowest ISO within the normal range for the camera. So in this case, it is 100. This is a Nikon Z2. Yeah, Z2. Then we're going to set the uh, aperture, I'm sorry, the shutter speed at the fastest speed within the normal range. There is something called high speed sync that we can use, but that's a whole other lesson. So we're gonna say 200th of a second is as fast as we can sync with our flash. From there, it's just a matter of adjusting the camera, you know, and you can just look through the back of it really, until you get a frame that is black. This tells us that none of the space, none of the light in the space is affecting our shot. Now, if you're doing that and the aperture that you get is not what you want, like let's say, well, I want to shoot it at four and I'm getting 5.6 in order to get it dark, then you'll have to either use something like high speed sync, put an ND filter on the lens, there's lots of ways that you can get around it, but for now, we're happy with 5.6. I like 5.6, we'll start there. So I'm gonna take a shot and we'll see what it looks like. I'm over here in capture one, hopefully the image will appear. Yes, it did, let me switch here. Okay, we can see that it's basically black. If you wanna do a final test here, we can grab the exposure slider and drag it over until we start to see detail on her, which is about two and a half stops. So we're about two and a half stops underexposed. That's like our shadow baseline. We want to make sure that we're at least two stops. Three is fine, four or more is also good. But at that point, you might be wasting power with the flash unless you really need that depth of field. Okay, Mahal and Drive. Uh, okay. I feel like I saw that I have Harvey the Six Foot Rabbit. Uh oh, Thief, 1980. Boy, I actually don't know any of these films. <laughs> I know every movie. I know none of these. I may have been You're kidding. Uh, <laughs> Blazing Saddles. Oh no. Lights from 1984 when Smith is exercising. Wow. You mean the movie 1984? We're not going to do any of those, but thank you for contributing. <laughs> we'll just cut that part out of the video. <laughs> okay, so again, we have our flash, and we're going to now set our flash to create the image that we want. This is going to give us our black frame. This is where we're going to start. So, yeah, I'll let you from this side. I'm going to light Mercer from this side because that way the camera won't be blocked. Whenever you're making a decision on where to light somebody from, always look where the cameras that are filming you are, and then don't put the softbox between yourself, between the, the, the subject and the camera. Because if I put the softbox over here, you guys won't be able to see Marissa. So this is like very super, super important. It really has nothing to do with face shape or height or anything like that. It really has to do with whoever's watching the video. All right, so this is an extra small softbox from Shamira, fitted on a Profoto B10. Uh, I'm going to move it in. If we move our lights in close, they will feel softer, but they'll also have a more dramatic fall off. And actually, one of the things I want to talk about is exactly that. If you look at conventional portrait photography, conventional, because somebody's about to tell me that they don't shoot this way, it's generally pretty flat. Things are really lit up, right? The backgrounds are lit, the people are lit. When you watch a movie, not in every scene obviously, they often use a more high contrast lighting. It's something that when we are calling an image cinematic, is that the word? Yeah. Cinematic, that's usually a feature. Not to say that every movie has lots of high contrast, but that's what we draw from it as photographers. So one of the things we want to do here is draw drama with contrast. So we're going to come in here and we're going to try to do it with, we're going to start by doing it with light, then we'll come in and we'll add other effects to, you know, in post or whatever if we want. Blade Runner. Fight Club, Men in Black, wow. Oh, cool. Okay, we'll have to, 
We'll work on that, guys. Uh, I'll get you next time. All right, so uh, maybe we'll do a poll. <laughs> I'll put a poll over on my YouTube, and uh, we'll do that in, in April, maybe. All right, so we're going to go for some contrast here. And the way that we do this is we move the camera. The, I'm moving the camera in close so I don't get any, uh, any stop box in the shot. And I'm going to, I'm about 70 millimeters. People always ask me that. And I'm going to come in nice, and I'm going to do something that people always ask me why I do it. Okay, I'm gonna, and I'm not even that close. I'm gonna come in close and I'm gonna cause contrast. We want contrast, we wanna punch in, we wanna get in close. I left just a little bit of the top of your head in there just for them, because now let's get in how we should really do it. When we do a close up shot in a movie, wardrobe. She's looking that way, she's dramatic, chin down a little bit, good, 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 and she's like, what's going on here, what's my scene? Boom, right? We get in close, we feel it, we're tight on the subject, right? We're creating dramatic light across their face and we're in there, right? We don't care if we can see the top of their head for all the people who always ask me about seeing the top of their head. Nosferatu, nice. Do you not ever watch movies? I'm, I'm trying to remember. Every single remember. movie you ever watch. <laughs> Actually, no, that's true. You're right, you're right. It is called the extreme close-up. It's actually, it's funny because I was thinking when somebody suggested Fight Club, you actually helped me light a scene for my movie that was inspired, the light was inspired by scene. Right, there you go. Fight Club, we could do that. Well, maybe, we, you know, we used to do something, if anybody who's in New York remembers this, we used to actually light scenes live. I don't know if we streamed those or not. Maybe we did, I can't remember. Yeah, those are super fun. Okay, so back to this. <laughs> you knew I wasn't gonna do it. <laughs> ah, come here, extra ball. Okay, so here we are, nice and close, right? Drama, punchy. The other thing that you see a lot, and I, feel, I think these have lost favor in uh, still photographers over the course, especially in the 90s they did, when I was really coming up. And um, it's, it feels me feel old to say it. I was coming up in the 90s. Marissa wasn't even born yet. We, is to use backlighting. Backlighting, a movie, I always joke about this. When you watch movies, everybody seems to always be backlit. Even if it doesn't make any sense. Sometimes it makes sense, but they just always backlight people because it adds three-dimensionality to it. You're looking at a flat image. And if you look at paintings and all these other things, what you find is that you want to go from uh, neutral to dark, to light, or by, basically you want to have a wrap. So I'm going to show you. We're going to add a backlight. I'm actually just going to use a bare head, which I never do. Everybody who normally watches this is like, why are you doing that, Daniel? Well, it's what I got. So if we add a back or separation light to her, what we're going to do is we're going to add contrast. Again, this is important for us. Now, I can use the modeling light if I want. <clears throat> now, normally in a portrait, I would 100% want to use a softbox back here, but when I'm doing this kind of more cinematic lighting, I often will just use a bare head. This is gonna create, I probably should make it, people would rather see the giant picture of Marissa, but I'll make it. So I've added the light here, let me just show you. I got two different groups going on. This is my A group, that's my B group. I'm going to turn the modeling light on so you can see where it's good. We're gonna really blast it through, right? We're gonna kill this thing with some backlight. Um, all right, so, you can use a lot of different ways. I'm going to take the, the A light, which is the soft box. I'm going to turn it off for a second. And the police are coming. I'm in TTL right now, by the way. Sometimes people ask me what about a light meter. Um, the, I'm using the meter in the camera, effectively. So we're going to take a shot. She's going to look off towards the soft box a little bit. And we're going to basically rip the light in from the back, right? Now, and we actually talked about this. And we, we did shot like this, actually, pretty recently. <laughs> we do this a lot. This is punchy. This has flavor, right? Now, I could just turn the softbox on in the front, which I will. And when we do, what will happen is it will, it will balance out. So first, I'm going to do that. I switch everything to manual, and we're going to do that. Then I'm going to start to show you how we can make this more rich and crunchy. So here's, here's the properly exposed shot, right, which is not bad, right? But if we want to add something to this to make it a little bit more, you're not seeing anything. Let's go back. Okay. 
Just the hard, sorry guys, just the, uh, the hard light from the back, right? Punchy, punchy, punchy. Then we add the front light. Oh yeah, it's a portrait. Again, it, it loses it a little bit. We want to keep that punchiness. So in order to do that, I'm just going to leave the picture up so you're not going to see me very big unless I'm doing something funky. In order to do that, we need to think about ratios. Instead of properly lighting, if you will, the front light, we overexpose the hair light, we're going to underexpose the key light. So I'm going to take my A light and I'm going to turn it down one and a half stops. Might be a little too much, but we're going to see. And this is going to give us Okay, yeah, already we're coming in. Now, it's, a little, it's still a little flat, and the reason why it's flat is because of the position of the light. Where it seemed fine and contrasty before, in this shot, it's too, uh, so we're gonna double down and we're gonna get even closer with our softbox. Oh. We're gonna bring this thing in. Yep. You don't have to back away from it, I'm trying to get close to you. <laughs> She's afraid of the light. I'm gonna bring it in until basically it's going to be in the shot. Now, if we were doing a movie, this is not how we would do it. We'll talk about that in a second. Okay, see now, right? Now the light's coming in. It's still a little bit kind of blah portrait because of its position. It's too far in front of her. What we want to do now is think about the angle of the light. We've got that heavy backlight coming, so we're going to actually bring this light around this way. And then we're gonna have her look this way a little more. There we go. She can look back at me and be like, what happened? Drama. 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 And now we're starting to get what's effectively called short lighting. We can actually bring this up a little bit too. So again, we can tweak these things as we go. The aim here is to add punchy contrast while still keeping kind of a beautiful light, right? We want the light to be beautiful because there's no reason, I mean, obviously you can do a horror movie but people still look beautiful in horror movies, <laughs> in most cases. I suppose it depends on the horror movie. Okay, if you're unsure, you can turn on your modeling lights to see where they are, bring your face this way slightly, a little more. There we go. And that will help you to see what, we, what you're getting here. Okay, now we're kind of getting closer to where we want to be. At this point, we can start to really evaluate our exposure, okay? No overlay. <laughs> a good head crop will show the whole head. <laughs> really? Oh, well, that's good. Is a good head crop the top one third of the top? Well, you want to think about where the, the, the it, uh, we'll talk about composition in a second, but yes. Yeah, the streets around space were great. Okay, so let's talk about composition for a second because we got, we have that person that has to see Mercer's whole head or also thinks she's actually got no head on top. I joke, no, of course. What you want to do is think about kind of the rule of thirds. And, and, and when I say the rule of thirds, some people try to put somebody's eyes at the third spot. You can do that, but it really depends on your composition. You want to leave enough room for, for the person to breathe, and you also want to leave, this is like a triangle shape, you want room. So let's, let's talk about the composition for a second. I'm going to switch to the camera, and I'll, I'll show you something. Because right now we're just getting the light set up. All right, so I'm looking, gonna look through my camera now. Let me turn these lights off here. Now, this is not the actual exposure, obviously, because, what happened? Nope, that's what I want, okay. Be, let's turn the modeling lights on so you guys can see. Okay, so if I'm looking through my camera, she's kind of in the middle, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give her what, what we wanna call room to breathe, which means I'm gonna have her you can have her take a step, to, basically it would be to camera left, but if I move her, the light will change. So I will just move the camera this way, right? So we wanna give her some, some frame. Then we're gonna have her look this way. Now we're assuming that this is gonna work because of previous frames, she's looking the right direction, there's the 180 rule, there's all that, we're not teaching film out filmmaking, so don't worry about that. Okay, now, where should she be? If we, should we, if we should take this shot, And we look at where she is and where she's looking. She's a little dead in the eyes there. I mean, the exposure's off because uh, we moved her a little bit. But basically, she's looking across the frame. There's, there's negative space here that's, that's powerful. The light moves across. That's kind of, you guys have to kind of feel it out, right? I mean, you, it's hard to say exactly 
there's a fixed rule. And I think when you want to find a fixed rule, um, as far as like where exactly to put our eyes, that's where you end up having trouble. So go with the gut, go with what feels right. It also depends on the person's hairstyle, how, where exactly, how big their forehead is, you know, how much you want to leave in. All right, so let's have you turn this way a little more. So this, this A light is a little bit too dark. But I think that's, again, more because of position than it is from, because we moved slightly, remember. Okay, I think that's going to be better. I moved around a little bit. I'm going to take the A light. I'm going to bring it up two tenths just to be safe. I'm going to turn the model lights off because now you got the idea. Let me turn these bell lights back on because I think you can actually see better when I do this. And then it's not super yellow. <laughs> okay. Now, powerful and boom. Okay. That lights in the shot a little bit. But now we have, again, we got the contrast going on. So, this is the baseline. What we want to do now, Northern Ireland, welcome. Uh, okay. Let me just get that out of the shot so we don't have that in every single picture. Mirza likes to move her. What's the scene? Yeah. Will you stay still if I tell you the scene? Yes. All right, what's the scene, guys? Give Marissa some, uh, some inspiration here. All right, so... The scene is you're always looking that way for whatever reason. I'm just what trying to set something. Yeah, I need some, I need some direction. <laughs> That's what she's looking at, right? Okay, so what's happening here? We're gonna we're gonna see what they say. They're a little bit behind. Yeah, the feed's getting choppy. I apologize for that. <clears throat> I do not know what is going on here. We are having the weirdest internet. I am hoping that I did not cause cough in your ear. I, th I thought I muted myself. Let's hope so. I apologize. All right. Uh, laggy, laggy, laggy. Yeah, drop down a little bit. Drop your uh, quality down a little bit, guys, if it's lagging. There's not much I can do on this end. Actually, hold on. Oh, what just happened there? There is something. I don't know if I can actually do this while I'm streaming. I'll probably crash the stream by doing this. There's a latency. Oh, I can't do it because I'm already there. Go into your latency and switch it. There's like a latency setting, and whatever it's at, change it. It's like if you're in low, change it to high or something like that. Wow, that's dark, Gabe. What is it? All right. Bollywood. I don't think we're going to do it. Okay. Uh, all right. So, no, that's not the dark one. Van Helsing, vampires. That's interesting. Wow, really dark today. Uh, or, or you're at your partner's funeral and the assassin is across the room. <laughs> That's great. Okay, we have to that one. All right, so. I'm at my, my partner's funeral and their, their assassin is across the room. There you go. You, you're the winner. <laughs> All right. She's going to get it. Remember the funeral decorum. Okay, let me hear like really sad. That was sad? Oh, I was getting sad. I was getting there. Well, you look mad there. I'll, I'll take mad. The assassin is across the room. I'm going to kill them. I'm really upset. Obviously, they're I think we're going to bring this a tiny bit. Oh, when I switch to the camera view, I wonder then it might be. But that, would, that shouldn't affect me here because it's not. That's weird. It might just be probably a coincidence. Well, the camera view is lagging. So maybe that's all what you were seeing. Maybe that's what you're talking about. When I switch to the camera view, it's, it's, yeah, it's jumpy. It's not. So I'm just tweaking the exposure here when Morris is getting in character. All right, we're getting close to where we want to be. Now we're going to kind of come in here and change this up a little bit. And, okay, first of all, let's, Morris has got our mood. Here we go. You see them. You're like, yeah, boom. All right. Wow, angry. I'll get there. So we have angry Marissa. We're going to do a couple things here, and then I'm going to come back. So I'm in Capture One now, and this is not a Capture One tutorial by any means, but one thing we want to do when we're doing this kind of stuff is we want to really mess with our contrast. And the thing is, is that when you have these modern cameras, they have a gazillion stops of dynamic range, and everybody sells you this camera. How many stops does that video camera have? <laughs> exactly, right? All the dynamic range in the world. But the thing is, that flattens your image. So if we look at... 
our, our uh, histogram, we have all kinds of space we can move around. So I'm going to actually come here. I'm just going to do this quickly. And I'm going to grab my, my lights and bring them up. I'm not concerned about losing detail in her hair because, again, it doesn't really matter. And we're going to bring that up. We're going to bring the contrast in. Now, the other way I could have done this is used a harder light from further back, but then we, it would be rougher on her face. I don't want that. I want it to be punchier. So this is effectively like a color grading. And we're going to bring our darks in. We want to crunch the range to add that punch. And the beauty of this is that once we've done this, I'm just doing it in the levels. You can also do it in the curves. Once we've done this, it will stay. So when I do the next shot, where she looks at him and she's gonna be like, you're dead. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> now I'm not kidding. <laughs> she's looking, she's burning through it. If looks could kill. Boom, okay. I don't think that was in focus, but it's okay. All right. You see, it translated into the next shot. It was actually. We brought that contrast in. But we're still kind of flat here. Now, if you notice, the background's white, which is kind of just going like a soft gray. She's wearing like a dark blue shirt. Everything here is very kind of monotone, which can work. But one, another thing that we do, or we see a lot in filmmaking, is the idea of using light to make the background something else. Now, and I've done this before, and we're going to just use the data light because it's the simplest thing to do. We want to add something to the background. The background is just flat and boring here. We don't, if we, even if we don't have space, we're in an apartment, right? There's always something going on. We're either dressing the set to make, make the scene, which might be weird in a portrait to like throw pictures on the wall or whatever, because we don't need that. So what we can do those, we can do it with light. We can think about where light might be coming from, why there's light on her hair, all that other stuff, and kind of put something together. So let's jump over here to this camera. And I'm going to use my data light. So the data light is, and again, you can get lights nowadays that have uh, the ability to add, oh, we could put a light, a light stand back there. That's good. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I think better for you guys is I'm going to go like this. I'm going to try to show through the camera again. Let me know if it starts lagging. But again, it does have a little bit of a lag on the on the uh, the camera. So we're going to go through the camera. And I'm going to kill the lights in the background. I, I'm sorry, on the overhead. So of course, this looks terrible because it's doing a fake exposure. But let's take a look at this. OK. So we have this background uh, right now with this, uh, a single hot light on it. And what I'm going to do is, I mean, this light right here is being is showing the reflection. What you can do is you can do things to shape it and make the background have a little bit of flavor. I can't see anything, of course. Yeah, OK. This is a tungsten light, by the way, so it's going to be a little on the warm side. Move this over a little bit. This is just a slash, right? This is like one of the most basic things you can do. We use them in interviews. Hope oh, I stopped talking. Seth hates dead air. When Seth's not here, I can stop talking. <laughs> All right, so we've got this little bit of a slash. Oh, okay. And let's go here, and I'm at the camera now, guys. I know it's dark. I'm going to adjust my shutter speed. If I adjust my, flat, my aperture or my ISO, it will affect the entire shot. But if I adjust my shutter speed, it will only affect the constant light, which is that light right there. So you can see what's happening there. I'm at a 50th of a second. Now, if I turn the flashes back on, it still looks like that, right? That's the exposure. But when the flash fires, oops, we should get, now again, the background's not going to be black like it was there. Yeah, okay, so we're already getting, oh, you look very upset there, Marissa. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, you can see that now this light, and, and if you notice how I did the slash, this is, again, this is the most basic thing. We're going to get more funky here. When is it okay to burn the highlights? Always. 
No, when is it okay to burn the highlights? That's a good question. It really depends on the scene, right? I would not burn highlights on somebody's skin uh, as a general rule. All right, let's get one good shot here. Good. As a general rule, I would not uh, burn highlights on the skin if you can avoid it. Uh, because you might want, if you start to do any retouching, it might get funky. So like here, it's real close, but it's not completely blown out. And also remember that I adjusted my exposure. If I go back over to my levels, I'm sure that's not blown there. So, but if we notice now, we have a bright light in the corner ripping across her hair and then coming down to the bottom. See, I'm creating space with the slash. And slash is, again, like the most basic, um, I mean, not slash the guitar player, but he's probably a very nice person. I wouldn't call him basic. Has all those cool hats, you know, slashes. Yeah, where's the nose? All right, so I'm gonna drop my shutter a little slower, see if we can get that brighter. But you see how this starts to make sense, right? You've got this light across the back, it's blowing out our hair because it makes sense. Even though, again, we're separated, there's space here, right? And we can do any number of things with multiple lights to create something where we start getting a shot that's a little bit more funky. Now, the next thing we can start messing with is color, okay? So there's lots of ways to do this. Let me just show you the most basic thing, which is to just take the background light and change it to tungsten balance. It's at daylight right now. Actually, it's a little bit warmer than daylight, but I'll, I'll change it to, I'll drop it down. Well, that's power. Okay, that was, okay, there we go. I'll drop it down to 28. This is now uh, on, the cool, on the warmer side. So let's take a shot and I'll show you what that looks like. And we can see how the color will affect the image. So that's warm, right? But I think for this scene, where there's some violence uh, in the air, perhaps cool might be the way to go. Harsh, punchy, right? So let's actually bring this up to above daylight, like in a cooler, 6,800 Kelvin. So we should get a little more blue going on here. I think you blinked there, but it's okay. Yeah, let's do one more. Oh, that's a good expression. Good. And we can see how that becomes almost, you know, like laser-like next to our warm or our kind of close to neutral, right? So depending on the vibe we're going for, we can really adjust this. Very simple. That's just color temperature right there. Nothing really uh, crazy. Let me tell, let me know how the smoke. <laughs> uh, you could definitely use smoke. What I would say about that, let me just quickly talk about smoke. Smoke's awesome. However, you're looking at me in a silhouette. Think about every movie that you've ever seen. Which ones have a ton of smoke during the scenes? Are they the best movies you've ever seen? <laughs> Or are they low budget, you know, somebody made it in their backyard movies? Okay, that's all I'm gonna say. I'll, 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 I'll leave it there. <laughs> you can send hate mail to 1234 Main Street. <laughs> okay, so that's cool. But let's talk color again for a second because now you see how color can make a difference in light shape. This is a very popular thing in filmmaking. To, that's where people use a warm and cool to contrast, to create kind of a certain feel. It's usually done uh, in post for the most part, but you also do it with the way you dress the subjects, the way you light them and everything. And it's often referred to as orange teal or warm cool. So we're gonna do something like that, right? Yeah. We can definitely do something with a warm, cool feel. And what that will do is add some dimensionality. Now, that little slash of blue, a little bit, right? But it wasn't enough, because first of all, she wasn't warm, and I could warm her face by adding a gel or whatever, but I think what we'll do instead is start again, rebuild the shot using just some constant lights I have, and then we'll kind of use color to see if we can make a, a different feel to a similar shot. So let's do this. I'm gonna, I'm probably still gonna use these Profoto lights. One thing I'm trying to do here too is not use too many lights, because I feel like sometimes we start doing these things, and we have so many lights that people begin to think, I can't really do this, I don't have that level of equipment. So I am trying to keep this simple. Uh, so we're gonna come over here. This is not a, it's so weird to use a light that's not battery powered. 
This is not a battery powered light. This is a, a data light, as I mentioned before. Turn it off for a second. This is an LED. It is both uh, tungsten and, or tungsten to daylight, or bicolor, you can sometimes call them. And what you're able to do with this, is, I'm gonna use it for the, I'm gonna put a softbox on it to replace the other light. So we're gonna start there. You know what I can do actually? I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> Should I do it? I'm gonna do it, okay. I had something in mind, but I changed my mind. I don't wanna blow your mind too much. We'll stick with one simple. <laughs> So I'm gonna take this little softbox, which is, by the way, one of my, I know, I know that Shimura softbox, I always say is my favorite softbox, but this is my favorite softbox that's not that one. It's a little tiny baby data light softbox. It's called, it used, it's called like itsy bitsy baby softbox or something like that. That's, I'm not even making that up. It's called, oh, it doesn't say on it. Super baby something or whatever. It's called something like that. I would never make up such a thing. <laughs> what I'm worse. I probably would, but I didn't in this case. All right, so I'm gonna take this light and I'm gonna use this to replace the other light as a key because I'm gonna actually use the tungsten setting here to make a warmer light. So don't look right at it. We'll turn it on. I'm gonna switch this to, uh, we'll switch it to just straight up tungsten. So 3200 Kelvin. Yeah, we'll go 31 helmet just to be different. And I'll leave it at full power for now because we don't want to have to go too slow on the shutter speed. And what's nice about this actually is, I, by the way, I left the front baffle off. I like to do that a lot of times to create a little bit more con contrast or punchiness. I should be able to do this now and they can still see you. Yeah, there you are. Let's switch to the other camera. Okay, so this is gonna be our key light, okay? And then what we're gonna do is you can see that it's a little bit spilling on the background. We can actually see it bouncing up, but I'm gonna fill the background with a, with a brighter light that is uh, color. I have over here a Roto light, AS2, I think it's called. I should really know the name of this light I usually have. This is a RGBW light, being that it can be, I guess, any color, as they say. And it has a gel mode, so I'm gonna jump over here and this is one of the reasons why LEDs are, are so popular um, these days, because you can really tweak these things. Kind of come in here. Now, yes, you can do this with uh, I'm going the wrong way. I want to go like a teal color, which is like kind of a greeny, greeny blue, right? Yeah, that looks pretty good. That's, that's kind of teal-ish. Somebody could tell me that's not teal, but it's as teal as you're going to get today. So again, we got this just shining on the background. Let me see what it looks like through the camera. Oh, you know what? It, it actually looks almost too good to the camera. Now, it looks a little more blue than I thought it was going to, but... Let's go here, boop, boop. It's green for six scenes, yeah, that's true. Okay, I think that's too blue and not green enough, right? All right, so what I'm gonna do here Actually, how does that look? Actually, that's kind of tealish, right? Yeah. yeah, that looks pretty good. All right, and we're gonna kind of dial it up. And the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna turn, hopefully I don't kill this thing, I'm gonna turn the modeling light on and then my pro photo over here. And this actually is a, color temperature changing modeling light. So I can make it, I'm turning it down to tungsten. And 
and I'm going to turn the power down. And here I'm just eyeballing it, because obviously there's no TTL here. That's all the way on the modeling light, so we'll see what we get here. It's further away from her, so oh yeah, that's not terrible. Okay, the overall exposure looks a bit smart, uh, bright, but that's because I have this. There we go. All right, so now I'm gonna adjust my camera. This is where it gets confusing, because I'm gonna now, because I'm, I'm using all constant lights, I'm just gonna take my uh, aperture and open it up a little bit, def four. That way I don't have to go too slow on the shutter. And I'm really mostly concerned with her face. I'll deal with the rest of it in a second, okay. All right, so we're ready now. She's looking, she's concerned. Did the flash go off? Did I just fire a flash? No, no. okay, good. Good, because I didn't want the flash to go off. <laughs> right, okay. This is probably a little much, but that's okay, because we're starting. That's too much greener than I thought it was gonna be. It's funny, on the back of the camera, this is why the back of the camera is not the best. I'm gonna jump into this, okay, so there's different modes here. And I'm actually gonna come in here and just adjust the hue to where I like it. Yeah, that's probably closer to what I want there. And I think the exposure's a little bright. I think that's probably gonna be better. Here I'm just eyeballing it, guys, based on my own personal experience with this light. Also, it's a smidge bright on her from the, from the dado. So I'm gonna bring my shutter up. Okay, let's see. There we go. Now the whole thing's a little too dark, so I'm gonna come over here, move this one in. I'm gonna use the inverse square law. We get to, probably should use another movie light, but that's okay. Good, good. There we go. Now we're getting crunchier. I think the whole thing looks a little bit, okay, first of all, you're a little shiny on the forehead. That's something we need, we need powder for that, yeah. All right, so for that we need powder. But let's take a quick look at this. We see the depth in the skin. And again, it's not an accurate skin tone anymore. It's warm for feeling. We have this blue back here from Mood. She's at this funeral. Now, we might want to add Yeah, I do have the adjustment on the computer, thank you. Good point. Let's undo those. Okay, good, thank you, that probably fixed everything. <laughs> yeah, it fixed that part anyways. Okay, good, perfect. So here, and remember before I said, because with the, you know, the thing with the flash is that, especially with the tools that we use for it, they tend to use a lot more diffuse and big lights. Now I know that you can use other stuff, but I find that tungsten lights, especially something like a data light, it just creates such a nice, really clean skin tone, even with the hard light. Like we can see the, how hard this is compared to the original light, but we get a really nice skin tone here. Now I just feel like the background's a smex, although I kind of like how dark it is, but I think we'll make it a little bit brighter. So I'm just gonna come up here and turn this light up a smidge. It's a 28%, uh, 26% rather, I'm gonna turn it up to 30%. And I think the blue color is nice. I'm actually liking the blue. Let me know in the comments if you like the blue uh, or if you want it to be a little more on the green side. I'm kind of liking it, to be honest with you. Yeah, this, this I like. And we definitely can add more fill. Like if you wanted, if it was too contrasty here in the front, we could add a fill and I do have another light. <laughs> no, AJ, I did not know. So I appreciate the... Uh, I, I kind of knew it was there, but I didn't know it was, getting, it was doing as much as it was, so I do appreciate. This is why I do shoots like this. I only do photo shoots where there's like 50 people watching me, so that, or 300 people watching, or whatever it's going on, so that I can always uh, have anybody let me know. Never uh, worry about giving, a feed, giving feedback. I, uh, I appreciate it. So I'm gonna bring this light in, and again, I'm just gonna use the modeling light. One thing you can't do from the controller I have, because I have the old controller, is control the modeling light. So I'm gonna have to do it from here. Turn it down a little bit. I think I'm just gonna do a tiny bit of on-access fill from the, uh, over here in the front. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. I 
like that blue. It's really rich. Italy, hey. Green light and red hair, not for me. <laughs> That's probably, uh, probably true. They're trying to say you have red hair. Oh, teal is 0R128, green 128, blue. Oh, I wonder if I can plug that in. Thank you. Hue. No, I don't think I can do that. That'd be awesome if you could plug in an actual color. You probably can. This light is very sophisticated. I'm just waiting for Marissa to finish doing her thing. Nobody, nobody cares if you're just like hanging out over there. It doesn't have exactly the ability to do that, and now I changed it from where it was. So we're just going to leave it where it is. Thank you, though, for the teal thing. If somebody has this light and knows how to set it like that, that would be amazing. I know there are lights you can do that with. OK, I'm just going to I added a little bit of fill from the front. Here we go. Let's see what we got. There we go. So I just brought up the front a little bit, if you like that or not. To be honest, I'm not sure if I do. I like that better. Oh, wow. OK, I made it way too blue. Hold on, guys. Let me fix my color. <laughs> what did you do? I'm going to go this way. I should have looked at the number before I changed it. This is, this is what happens when you don't look. Look before you leap. There we go. That's a little better. I think I also brightened it up, which I don't think I like now. Well, it's interesting, too, this light from the sides getting around her face, which I'm not loving, so I'm going to actually move it because I like how her position now. Yeah, it doesn't give you a percentage as far as I can tell. I probably should read the book. <laughs> it just has different hues. I mean, I, there's like an app with this thing, like many of these RGBW lights, but I don't have the app installed on my phone. So I, you probably can do that from the app, so I don't want to say that you can't. Um, but I can't. All right, I'm just getting this light where I want it. Oh, okay. Cool. I think we're getting what I think we're getting what we like to feel. Okay. So we have the mood, right? And, and again, I'm still keeping her pretty. You can you can make this darker. We can make this darker uh, and more moody by changing the position of the light on her. But it's, so right now we're still in portrait mode because I'm still keeping this as kind of a portrait with you know, this kind of idea that we're using ideas from kind of the movie lighting. But we can definitely, definitely uh, come in here and uh, you know, make this a little bit more kind of funky and, and moodier. So let's do that for the last few. And what we're gonna do is we're basically gonna raise our light source. Now, even though it might be that the light source might be very high. Sorry, I put that on your tip. <laughs> That's how you get Mercy to, to, to get some good tears in her eye. You put the light on her. On her. All right, so we're gonna move the light back, getting it higher, a little bit more moody. Um, because, of, because now it's darker on that side of her face, I'm gonna turn this fill light up a little bit. Okay, and we can start to get it a little bit more. I think I'm gonna need you to look up a tiny bit so I can see your yeah. eyes. So just like look here. Like not necessarily with your face. Your face is good like that, and then just eyes like here. Yeah. I just wanna get a little bit of light in her eyes because it is still a portrait. We can always cheat that a little bit. So we just brought a little bit more light into her eyes. And obviously you could add an eye light. There's lots of things we could do to bring this in to get a lot more mood. The point being is that we're bringing this in and we're making it, I'm gonna make the whole thing a little brighter. Actually, no, I'm not. Okay, I'm gonna adjust my exposure and take one more shot. I wanna bring the, I'm gonna go a 50th of a second. I wanna see if I had a little bit more light, if we can push the edge of the exposure. 
Yeah, I like that better. Okay. And again, we're like fighting to see in here, but that's okay, because that's part of the mood of the shot. And I think at this point too, keep exactly how you are as far as mood and stuff, I'm gonna get a little taller, because I, I don't want to need to get her whole head, but I do want to get a little further back. I, again, I can see the balance is off. Yeah. Yeah, I like this. Okay. It looks great. <laughs> Cheers from Greece. Hey. Okay, any thoughts, concerns, questions as we kind of wind this up? The point here, or my point here, I guess, is that sometimes when we're thinking about how to light things, we as photographers think inside the studio, right? We think these are the tools we have. We got soft boxes. We have magnum reflectors. We have beauty dishes. This is how we light things. Instead of thinking about how the world is, how light is in the world, Whereas filmmakers are generally thinking about creating a world with light. So we want to think about what's out there, how it might look, and how we can use the vibe of the world to make our lighting a little bit more cinematic, for lack of a better word. So I'm going to just do one more thing, because I can never stop, right? Uh, I feel like I want to make the background a little more interesting. It's just colorful right now. I kind of want some shape. That light's kind of like, Bleh, because it can't do much. So with that light, because it's just a big flat light, but I think I'm just gonna do a really quick thing here. So stand by here, I'll uh, look at Marissa. There you go. <laughs> they like looking at that picture of Marissa. <laughs> Over here, I'm just gonna take, if I can find it, a flag. I'm not gonna dig for a actual flag because it'll take all day, but I'm gonna come over here and we're just going to do one more thing that we often do in filmmaking, which is use flags to shape the light. This is a piece of cardboard. I'm gonna use it to effectively knock back some of this light here, make it a little bit more interesting so it's not just a single flat light. And I'm just gonna lean it on there because we're just gonna do one. Nope, I'll hold it properly with the stand. <laughs> I was just gonna lean it there, I was being lazy. All right, let's quickly do this guys. All I'm doing is putting it into the knuckle of the C-stand. Obviously, proper flags are the better way to do this. And I'm going to just bring this in and give myself a little bit of like a cutter, basically. Nope, not enough. This light really throws the light everywhere. Yeah, I think that's good. There we go. Okay, obviously the stands in the shot, and I'll have to adjust a little bit. Let me do a quick adjustment of my composition. I want to punch in a little bit tighter. I'm going to put her into this kind of darker and, and by its nature, warmer area because it doesn't have the blue. And Get that final emotion from Marissa. Powerful, mad, good. Revenge will come. And you can't see anything because I don't have you on the thing. <laughs> and we can see how the light is just much more intense. Okay, I love this, but I just want to get a little more light in our eyes. Which I can do just by simply, there's two ways to do it. One is to back the light up. And the other one is to lower it. I'm going to do a little bit of both. <laughs> I still want it above her because I like that. She is killing it. I'm just adjusting the light a little bit, guys. Okay, whenever you're ready. Oh. 
Nice. And there it is. Nice and simple, yet with enough kind of depth. We come over from a neutral slash gray into a warm light that she's sitting in and then off into a blue of the background. And you could make whatever color you want back here, obviously. Is that a bird making all that sound? <laughs> all right, I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna do a final tweak. And we can also color grade this again in post, adjusting our blues and warms to get the feel that we want. But that's basically a shot. That's right, shots in movies make lots of sense. Or light dome is great for diffusion, but really does throw the light everywhere. Yeah, it does. Electrical tape around the sides. They do make um, like barn doors and stuff for it, but I have not uh, tapped into any of that. This is beautiful. Well done, Marissa. You didn't see off camera where I poked her in the eye. That's how, that's how we get that. Poke yeah. me in the eye. Yeah. <laughs> oh, now I'm so sad. I was thinking about that. <laughs> She's just thinking about getting poked in the eye. But yeah, just think about, you know, think about light, think about color, think about contrast. Don't just add things to add them, but think about what they'll do to your shot. That's kind of what I was going for today. Hopefully this helped a lot. Um, let me know in the comments below, obviously, if you're watching this after the fact or if after the thing ends, what else you'd like to see here on Adorama. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, ring the bell, do all that goodness, because they've got live streams almost every Thursday. I'm here a couple times a month. Uh, Gavin's here, Seth's here, some other people. You can find Marissa at marissa.roper. Marissa Roper is a nice person. Marissa.roper is the best. <laughs> you can find me at Daniel Norton Photographer, and I'll see you soon. Now, this is the terrible part. I pretend like it ended right there. Wait, why is it? Nice. She's spinning. She's got a good spinning thing. <laughs> yes. Spin like that for a little bit so I can. <laughs> There's like a closing screen here. Hold on. Thanks for watching, screen. Boop, there she is. And out. <laughs>